Hi Fuday lovers, today I'll be sharing my latest CD Japan haul. If you like these types of videos, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. These are how the brushes look post-wash. I'll insert some photos of how they looked pre-wash. This is the Eihodo Makie P1. Chikahodo is purportedly the OEM for Eihodo. The long handle version of this brush has a makie that looks exactly like the MK2, so I believe it. It's made out of high quality gray scroll. It's from their makie line, and I can't get over how absolutely stunning the makie is. The Sakura has pink, white, and blue iridescent shifts. You can see the maki iridescence and color and vibrancy a little bit better when I'm holding it like this. It's so pretty. I love the iridescence. Pink and blue and green and white. Like mother of pearl. Gorgeous. It has a round feral and shape. It fluffed up quite a bit and got softer post-wash. The bundling could be a little better. It's not super uneven or anything, but it could be a little bit more even. Like right here. It also has a lot of hair and is dense, but the hairs expand and fluff up at the top, which makes it feel a bit airy. There are some white hairs inside of it, which is not often seen in Grey Scroll Fude. It has a hair length of 55 millimeters. It actually has medium resistance considering how long the hairs are. See how it doesn't just smash straight into my skin when I'm swirling it? I actually really like that and I prefer that. I don't like it when brushes just like smash into my face with no resistance at all. I thought it would be floppy, but I'm so glad that it's not. It feels fantastic swirled around the cheeks. I really love how it feels on the skin, from the softness of the hairs to the feathery feeling across the skin. It applies a light layer of loose setting powder evenly. This is how much hair is in it when I grab onto it tightly. Here it is next to the Z1 on the right. You can see that the P1 on the left flares out more and is less densely packed. The Z1 has a hair length of 45 millimeters and is more densely packed. The P1 has a hair thickness of 32 millimeters while the Z1's is 20 millimeters. The P1 is a larger brush overall. And remember the P1 hairs are 55 millimeters. The resistance of the Z1 on the right is firmer because the hairs are shorter and it's a lot more densely packed than the P1. Here's the handle length comparison. You can see that the Z1 is a little bit longer than the P1, but not by that much. It's just that the P1 has an extra long ferrule, which throws everything off. I prefer more even ferrule to handle ratios. So the Z1 is definitely more my cup of tea in terms of handle length and everything. The closest brush I have is the limited edition Koyudo Grey Scroll Kabuki on the right. The ferrule is wide and loosely packed just like the P1. The Kabuki does have shorter hairs at 45 millimeters though. The hair color is a little bit different too. The Kabuki on the right has lighter brown hairs than the Grey Scroll on the left. It's like darker brown on the left and lighter brown on the right. I absolutely adore the Koyudo Kobuki, and I think it was one of my best Fude purchases ever. I just really wish that it came with a long handle instead of a Kobuki handle. Okay, this is really hard to do, <laughs> but I'm trying. I think they both have around the same resistance. The hairs of the P1 feel the driest out of the three, but it still feels very nice on the skin. It feels supple and pillowy feeling. It's not just a collector's or enthusiast's piece, but is also functional if you can get over the extra long ferrule and short handle. 
One of my biggest pet peeves with fude is when the ferrule is longer than the handle itself. The ferrule is so long on this that you have to hold it by the ferrule. It kills me because the maki is breathtaking and dazzling and the head is my cup of tea but the ferrule and handle ratios are not. It would be perfect if the ferrule and handle were even in length. Can I just insert that Elmo fire gif right now? You know the one where he has his hands up and there's a raging fire in the background? <laughs> That's how I feel like with the handle and ferrule ratio. If I'm doing my makeup, I would hold it like this, like to go into the powder and then, you know, technically you could hold it by the handle, but then I don't want to touch the maki. <laughs> so that would be very tricky, which is why you just hold it by the feral, I guess. Ugh, can't get over how beautiful it is. If only the handle was longer. When I bought the short handle P1, there was only one left and it immediately went to back order afterwards. I assumed it would get restocked since it said back ordered, but then it changed to out of print two weeks later. You can still purchase the P1 with a regular cream colored handle from the WP series and other handle types though. Next are the Koyuto Premium Series brushes. This line is one of those hidden gems people consider underrated. I didn't go out of my way to purchase any until recently since I'm not a big fan of the look of salt and pepper hairs and especially since it's mixed with Sokoho. Koyuto Sokoho and I already don't have a good track record so I was reluctant to try out brushes with their Sokoho. My sensitive skin does not like most of their Sokoho. The only Sokoho hairs I like are the ones from the Mizume Zakura line. These are made out of a mix of gray scroll and Sokoho hairs. The Sokoho on these are the white thicker hairs. They're wavy and also curly at the tips and the powder brush. You can see the waviness right here and some of the tip curling. Right here. The squirrel hairs are very soft and are mostly seen from the top where it's all dark gray while the goat hairs are mostly visible on the outer layers. You can also see the goat hairs on the inside when you sweep your finger across the top. The tips on the top feel very soft from the scroll hair. Koyuto uses what they call shifting technology with the hair mix. I think they bundled it by putting the goat hairs lower than the scroll hairs, which is why the top is all dark gray and very soft. So you can use the top to give an all scroll effect or the sides for a heavier goat finish. The handle size and lengths are about the same as the Fupas. Here's the white Fupa 14 for comparison. I think they feel nice in the hand and they're not too short or small, but I do have small hands. So when I'm dipping into a product, I mostly hold it by the ferrule like this, but when I'm applying it onto my face, I hold it by the handle. Here it is with the white Fupa 14. They're about the same size. The P1 has a thicker handle and ferrule, just by a bit. Here's the P2 compared with the Fupa 14. The P2 handle and ferrule are thinner. The ferrules and handles are matte with tiny micro shimmers. I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera. The shimmers are even smaller than the ones in the white Fupa, while the Fupa 14 has even more shimmers. I do like how the matte handle feels, but I still prefer the look of the glossy white Fupa with the green iridescence or glossy overlay. So this one is glossy and it's smooth and the premium series ones are just matte. And they're smooth too. It also says Koyuto and Kanji in metallic pink. This is the Koyuto P1 powder brush. It has an oval ferrule. It's large with a dense fluffy head. It has a hair length of 50 millimeters. I like that it can be used both on the sides and the tip and not feel awkward. So I can apply powder on the sides like this or directly on the tips like this. If you want a softer feeling or a softer finish, apply it with the tips with the longer scroll hairs. And if you want a firmer, stronger finish, then apply it with the sides with the goat on the sides. It has medium resistance. It's soft, but if you have extremely sensitive skin, it won't be soft enough for you. It doesn't feel scratchy on the back of my hand or my face, but I can feel the hair tips on my face and it's decently soft on my cheeks. Although both the face brushes would probably be prickly on my bad skin days. 
Compared to my Hakuhodo B509 gray scroll and goat hair mix on the right, the P1 is softer due to the scroll hairs being at the top. The Hakuhodo has both hair types bundled at even lengths, so I can feel the goat hair tips on my face. There are also a lot of blunt Hakuhodo goat hair tips, so it feels more prickly. The hair tips on the P1 on the left are all dark gray, whereas the Hakuhodo on the right is more evenly dispersed in terms of goat and squirrel hair ratio. Here's the Hakuhodo, just showing you up close the goat hair tips. P1 again, softer. Since this brush is mixed with goat, it does accentuate dry spots on my face when used with powder. It's not as apparent as a brush made completely out of goat hair though. My skin is really dehydrated, so I prefer something that's either completely made out of squirrel or fox hair for powder, as those give me smooth, polished finishes without accentuating dry areas nearly as much. I do really like this with the Clinique Solar Pop Bronzer though. I struggle to find brushes that will apply Clinique products like this well. The outer layer of Sokoho on this brush is able to grab and deposit the bronzer beautifully. It covers my entire cheek and gives a soft yet medium pigmented finish. Compared to the Chikohoto Passion P1 powder brush that's made out of dyed Sokoho, the Koyuto applies heavier and the hairs are softer. The Passion powder brush requires a lot more swipes into the pan and doesn't apply as pigmented even though the hairs are dyed Sokoho and they're not as soft. The Passion Brush also feels extremely prickly on very sensitive skin. Another thing this brush is good for is to blend out heavy blush or cheek products. If you're heavy handed with blush, you can go in with P1 and sweep over it one to three times to blend it out. Do be careful though because this brush is a strong blender and you can end up blending 95% of the product away if you're not careful. I think it also depends on the bundling. So mine has a lot of Sokoho hairs on the outer layers. I'm not sure if everyone else has it the same way. So some people might actually get a little, a little bit less Sokoho in the outer layers so then it won't blend as heavily as mine does. I can see why people love this brush and do think it's nice. It can be used for both powder and bronzer. It would also make a lovely travel brush if you're the type to travel with Fude. My P2 is not as heavy of a blender as the P1 is and I think it's probably due to like the density too because the P1 is so much denser than the P2. The white hairs go almost all the way to the top so it blends better than the white hairs that just stop kind of like more halfway here, a little less than halfway. There are some up here too, but it's not as much. Hopefully you'll be able to see here that the gray skull hairs are longer at the very top compared to the goat hairs here. This is the Koyuto P2. It has an oval ferrule just like the powder brush. This is not as fluffy as the powder brush and is more compact. I personally wouldn't use this as a small powder brush. The hairs are not long enough for a small powder brush for me. The compactness works better for blush than powder. The resistance is leading on the firm to medium side. The hair length is 40 millimeters. Here are other brushes as a point of reference so you can get a sense for the size. This is the Hakuhodo J110, Koyuto BP18, and Chikoto Z4. The J110 on the right has been laid flat for a while, while the P2 has not. The BP18 on the right has also been laid flat for a while. Same thing with the Chikoto Z4 on the right, lay flat for a while. I mostly use it on the side and depending on the formula, it will either apply very lightly like an all scroll brush or medium in pigmentation, which can be built up to full. The squirrel hairs in the brush will grab and deposit shimmer particles. I did two sweeps with Tom Ford's Frantic Pink Blush. It mainly applied just the shimmer particles without any pigment. I definitely need to sweep in much more to get the color to show up. 
I'm not a fan of it with this formula. I did around three to four sweeps with Milani's Big Blush in Rose Doro. It had light color payoff and deposited lots of shimmer. It needs to be built up with this formula just like with the Tom Ford. I did two to three sweeps with Hourglass's Radiant Magenta Blush. It worked the best with this formula. It applied the heaviest with the least amount of sweeps into the pan. It also applied the shimmer particles. I did 10 and more sweeps into Milani's Big Blush in Berry Amour. It produced a medium to full pigmented finish with finer shimmer particles compared to Rose Doro. That could just be the formula though. Then I did four sweeps into a soft pressed NARS blush, which is the one on the third from the left right here. It grabbed and deposited color well, but I really dislike using it horizontally across the cheeks. So I would go in like this, and also the head is a little too wide for this blush. Horizontally as in like this across the face. I prefer using it vertically to pat the color on. I think the color looks much better this way compared to sweeping across. I compared it with the Hakuhodo B505 on the other side of my cheek with the same NARS blush. I dipped into the blush the same amount of times. The B505 applies lighter and feels scratchy compared to the Koyudo that feels nice on my super sensitive cheeks. Not super soft, but not scratchy either. Keep in mind that my skin has become even more sensitive than it was a couple years ago, and most people are not as sensitive as I am. Most of you will probably think that the Hakuhodo salt and pepper mixes are extremely soft. I did too when I bought them before. Anyway, back to the hair. The hairs are evenly mixed in the Hakuhodo where you can pretty much see an even amount of goat and squirrel hairs mixed in. It has lots of blunt goat hair tips like with the B509 and the goat hair is at even lengths with the squirrel at the top. The Koyudo mix and whatever the shifting technology stands for cleverly places the squirrel hairs at the top higher than the goat hairs so that it feels soft when used on the tips. Like I said earlier, they also placed lots of goat hair on the outer layer which enables you to grab firmer pressed products with the side and applies it at medium to full pigmentation. The goat hairs also do not scratch me or feel prickly but I can definitely feel them. I think Koyudo's mixing method and shifting technology is ingenious and innovative. Handle length comparison and size comparison. There's something about the hair mix and shape that I'm not a fan of. It's probably just my application style, but I noticed that when I sweep across the cheeks with it, the bottom half of the brush would deposit the color much more pigmented compared to the top half. There's also a bit of a sharp blush line on the bottom like when you apply with an angled cheek brush for contour. I do like how soft the squirrel hairs are on the top and the look of padding the color on instead of sweeping across. I'm quite particular with how I like my blush finishes and fude, so I'm most likely one of those rare people who are not in love with this brush. Aesthetically speaking, it is cute and reminds me of a bunny tail. Remember, everyone's preferences are different, so take my words with a grain of salt. If the brushes from this line interest you, then give it a try. I believe they should be extremely soft for people with non-sensitive skin. I'm most impressed by the hair mixing method and shifting technology for the brushes from this line. As a foodie collector and enthusiast, I would have appreciated it if Koyudo had used Saikoho for this line instead of Sokoho considering it's their premium line and the prices that they're charging for these. I hope this was helpful and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you in my next video. Bye bye! Koyudo Saikoho and I already don't have a good track record, so I was reluctant to try out any brushes with their Saikoho. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I keep saying Saikoho for Sokoho and Sokoho for Saikoho. <gasps> I'm tired. I need chocolate. Okay. Is this straight? Whatever.